Hi there, and welcome to Mr. Arnold's Maths. In this video, we're going to look at some factorising questions. Uh, we're going to start off with five examples, then I have a heap of questions for you to try. Then we're going to knock it up a level, make them a little bit more tricky. I'll show you another five examples, and then we got some more for you to try. So, let's get cracking with example one. Now, just to explain exactly what factorising is, if you've watched the video on expanding brackets, so suppose I gave you something like this, I don't know, 12 bracket x plus 2. And I asked you to expand that. Well, hopefully you know how to expand that already because you've watched my video before and you know that that's 12x plus 24. Well, factorizing is doing that process but in reverse. So we're actually going to go back from something like this to something that's in brackets, something like that. So I'm going to open two brackets. And I'm going to look at both terms and I'm going to ask myself a question. What is the biggest number that I could divide into both this and this? So in other words, I'm looking for the highest common factor of 24x. So the biggest thing that I can divide into 24x, but also that divides into 12. And with a little bit of thought, hopefully we'll realize that 12 will divide into both 24x and 12. So now I ask myself a que another question. I say, what would I have to multiply 12 by to get 24x? Well, to get the 24, I certainly have to multiply by 2. And to get that x, well, there's no x term here, so there must be an x term here. So let's check. 12 times 2x gives me 24x. That must be correct. And let's have a look at this one. What would I have to multiply 12 by to get 12. Well, hopefully you can realize that 12 multiplied by 1 will give me the 12. And we can check our answer really, really quickly by expanding it out. Let's expand this. 12 times 2x is 24x, and 12 times 1 is 12. So we are correct. Right, let's look at example 2. I'm going to look at both terms, and I'm going to ask myself, what is the biggest number, what's the highest common factor of 7x and 21. And with a little bit of thought, hopefully we realize that 7 is the biggest thing that we can divide into both 7x and 21. Right, what would I multiply 7 by to get 7x? Well, it must be simply x, 1x. 7 times x is 7x, so that's good. And what would I multiply 7 by to get 21? Well, 7 times 3 gives me 21. And again, if you want, you can expand this out to check your answer. Moving swiftly on to example 3, 5 and 25x. So what's the highest common factor of 5 and 25x? Well, the biggest thing that I can divide into both is 5. Now let's check. What would I multiply 5 by to get 5? Well, it must be 1. What would I multiply 5 by to get 25x? Well, to get that 25, I'll have to multiply the 5 by a 5. And... In order to get that x, well, there must be an x here. 5 times 20 times 5x is 25x. Okay, example number 4. The highest common factor of 16 and 4x must be 4. 4 is the biggest number I can divide into both. So, 4 multiplied by 4 will give me the 16. Now, if it's a negative sign here, we're going to have a negative sign here. And 4 times x will give me that 4x that I so desperately want. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times minus x is minus 4x. Right, example number 5 here. The highest common factor of 12x and 8, the biggest thing I can divide into both of those terms, must be 4. Now, what would I multiply 4 by to get 12x? It must be 3x. 4 times 3x is 12x, and Again, we have a negative sign here, so we're going to have a negative sign here. 4 times 8, or sorry, 4 multiplied by 2 will give me that 8. Now, just really, really briefly on the side here, I want you to watch out for this. We always must factorize fully, okay? So we want the highest common factor. Let me just show you something. If you look at this 12x minus 8, and you, you have a look at it and you say to myself, hmm... They're both even numbers, so I can divide them both by 2. Well, you're not wrong. 
but you won't get full marks in the exam for it. Let me show you what happens. 2 times 6x will give us the 12x, and 2 times negative 4 will give me the negative 8. Okay, so you might say to yourself, well, yeah, I factorized it. It's now in brackets, just like you said. However, let's get the blue pen out here for a second. If you look at this expression here, 6x, let's, let's take this expression and just write it over here, 6x, take away 4. If you look at this expression, hopefully you can realize that I can actually factorize that as well. Because I can divide the 6x and the 4 by 2. And we end up with 3x minus 2. So when you did this originally, you didn't factorize it fully because I can factor out another 2. And that's why the original factor should have been 4. The highest common factor was 4. So you got to make sure that you always use the highest common factor. So that's the biggest number that will divide into both expressions. Right. Lots of questions there for you to try, so just pause the video now and have a bash at those. Okay, hopefully you've had a go, go at those questions. Um, there are the solutions, so you can mark your work, see how you did. If you didn't manage to get any of those, maybe have a look over the answers and see if you can improve them for a second try. Right, let's take it up a little bit and try something a little bit harder. Again, it's the same idea, but this time the problems are just slightly trickier. So, let's have a look at example 1 here. We got 18x squared plus 12x. I always like to start by looking at the numbers. Now, what what is the biggest number that will divide into 18 and 12? Hopefully, you're good enough to realize that, well, 6 will divide into 18, and 6 will also divide into that 12. 6 will divide into the 18, and 6 will divide into 12. Now, I'm just going to leave a little bit of space here. Secondly, we got to look at the letters. we got x squared, and we also have x. That means I can actually divide both of these terms by x. Okay, so we can factor out 6x in total. Now, what would I multiply 6x to get 18x squared? Well, to get the 18, I certainly must multiply it by 3. And to get that x squared, I'm also going to have to multiply by x. So 6x by 3x will give me 18x squared plus sign in the middle. Okay, in order to get 12, I'll have to multiply the 6 by 2. And do I have to multiply by x as well? Well, no. If I multiply this by x as well, we're going to get 12x squared. We don't want 12x squared, we just want 12x. 6x times 2 gives me 12x. You can always check your answer with these. So in green, let's check our answer by expanding brackets. 6x by 3x gives me 18 x squared and 6x by 2 gives me 12x if you're not too sure about this expanding thing make sure you check out my video i've done a video on that as well right example two the highest common factor of 4x squared and 20x right let's look at the numbers first 4 and 20 what's the biggest thing i can divide into 4 and 20 well bit of thought and I have come to the conclusion that 4 will divide into both. 4 divides into the 4, and 4 divides into 20. Excellent. Right, what else? Let's look at the letters again. We got x squared, and we got x. Well, it's just like this one. So I can also factor out x. Right, what will that leave me with? What will I have to multiply 4x by to get 4x squared? 4x times x will give me the 4x squared. And in order to get 20x, well, I'll have to do 4x multiplied by 5. Again, check your answer. If you can't expand it out and get this, get your original question, you've made a mistake. 4 4x times x, 4x squared. 4x times 5, plus 20x. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next one here. So, question number 3. Again, let's start by looking at the numbers. I always like looking at the numbers first. 6 and 24. What could I factor out of 6 and 24? 6. 6 will do the job. Now, x cubed and x, what will I have to factor out? Well, I can certainly divide both terms by x. Okay, what would I multiply 6x by to get 6x squared, or 6x cubed? I 
I certainly have to multiply it by x squared. x times x squared gives me x cubed. So 6x times x squared gives me 6x cubed. Okay, and the second part, what will I multiply 6x to get 24x? Mm, it must be 6, 12, 18, 24, so it's got to be 4. 6x times 4 is 24x. And if you expand that out, you'll find that we have the correct answer. Right, quickly moving on to example 4, getting trickier again. So let's start by looking at the numbers. 16 and 4, what can I factor out there? Mm, both multiples of 4. Let's factor out that 4. Open my brackets. Let's look at the letters here. we got x cubed and x squared. Well, this one's even trickier again. What can I factor out both? I could actually factor out x squared. Take out x squared. Let's see what happens. What would I have to multiply 4x squared by to get 16x cubed? Well, to get that 16, I'm going to have to multiply by 4. And to turn this x squared into x cubed, I've got to multiply it by another x. x squared times x gives me x cubed. What would I multiply 4x squared by to get 4x squared? It's got to be 1. And moving on to our final example. Okay, highest common factor of 8 and 30. Let me think, let me think, let me think. It must be 2. So factor out that 2. Okay, let's look at the letters here. We got x cubed, we got x squared. What's the highest common factor of x cubed and x squared? Again, just like this one up here, it's x squared. Right. What will I multiply 2x squared by to get 8x cubed? Well, I'll have to multiply the 2 by the f by 4. 2 times 4 gives me the 8. Good. And x squared, but I need x cubed. So x squared multiplied by x gives me that x cubed that we're looking for. Negative sign. What will I multiply 2 by to get 30? Must be 15. What will I multiply x squared by to get x squared? 1. So... 2x squared times minus 15 gives me that minus 30x squared. And again, let's just really, really quickly expand this out and make sure we're right. Let's check. 2x squared times 4x gives me 8x cubed. 2x squared times negative 15 gives me negative 30x squared. Fantastic. You'll see that matches that, which means we've done our answer correctly. Okay. Here's plenty of examples for you to try. So pause the video, have a bash at those, and I'll show you the solutions in a second. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at those questions and you're confident in these. Here are the solutions. See how you get on if you didn't get them right. Have a look at the examples again, see if you can figure out where it is you're going wrong. That's all from me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will chat to you again sometime. Best of luck.